God loves us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. He could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass by. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down here quickly, for today I must stay at your home. He came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and held his ground and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. If I have extorted anything from any one, I shall repay it fourfold. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was preparing for today, I turned to today's date in the lectionary, and I noticed that this, these readings are here as you heard them, but also it's a commemoration of the presentation of Mary as a child in the temple. And I'm saying to myself, hmm, with Maccabees, the first reading, with Jesus and Zacchaeus, the second reading, and Mary, what, what, what's, what's the thread? What's the common theme? And as I was sitting here before Mass, I looked up, and the first window right now to my left is that scene, in, in that it's not in Scripture, it's in extra-scriptural documents of Mary being received into the temple as a young lady, accompanied by Santa Anna and Joachim, her parents. That's the first window here on the left. That's what the presentation of Mary is all about, that picture, trying to capture it all. But I thought with all the readings and the presentation, for us Christians, and Roman Catholics especially, Tradition is very important. Things that we, some of us did as children have faded away as far as religious um, events, but some of them have stayed and have to stay because they're more than tradition, they're our foundation, have stayed fresh and vibrant. The things that we ha have passed away, we don't have to talk about, but there are a lot less cultural celebrations than when I was growing up in an ethnic Italian neighborhood. But that's, that's all right. It's, it's appropriate to whatever culture comes forward and celebrates their Christian faith, whether you're Filipino, Irish, doesn't matter. So the traditions of the church that are solid have gone on through the ages and stayed with all of us, no matter what our ethnic background is. The most important traditions that are now sacraments are the seven. You know them. So that has held us together. Now I'm saying all that because that first reading from the book of Maccabees is relying on Jewish tradition. One of the rules of the Jewish tradition is no pork. You don't eat pork, you don't eat things that crawl on the ground. So snake is out of it, and crabs and lobster and things like that. And among them was pork. So when the head of the Persians took over Jerusalem, he demanded fidelity 
to each of the Jews who lived there, and they showed him fidelity, in this case, bless you, by forcing the Jews to eat pork. Now, you and I don't have food restrictions, but go back to our tradition. Remember Fridays? We, we never took meat, okay? So that's a strong tenant for the Jews as they commemorate their faith. So Eleazar, the leader of this particular clan, is being forced to eat pork. And he, ha he has a dialogue with those who are around him. You, you, you want to just do it, eat it, make believe you're, you're not eating it, or take something else and pretend it's pork and eat that and said, and Eliezer said, no, I, I'm holding on to my traditions because giving them up will scandalize myself and the youth. So when we are standing forth for our traditions as Catholics now, realize the impact they have on other people. When people see us pass the church and make the sign of the cross, or come into church, or celebrate our faith in some way, it's a good tradition to pass on to our ancestors. Now, Jesus is also breaking tradition in the gospel today. Zacchaeus was a short man, and he wanted to see Jesus. The problem was people didn't like him because he was a tax collector, and he handled the Roman money, which had images on it, which they were forbade. Another thing they were forbade to do, venerate or even have images of people. So what does he do? He climbs up the sycamore tree. Now, when I was in the Holy Land last, in Jericho last, uh, only twice in my life, but we saw that sycamore tree. It may not be the same one, but it's dedicated to Zacchaeus. It's a huge tree where he climbed up and could see Jesus as he's walking by. So now the crowd's watching Jesus as everybody watches you. You know, you come out of church, people are watching you. The crowd's watching Jesus. And Jesus says something very strange to Zacchaeus. I'm going to stay with you tonight. That is not strange hospitality. It is Semitic hospitality. You're visiting someone, you can tell them, I'll stay with you. It's like an honor to visit them and maybe bring something, like a little cake. Okay. So Jesus says to Zacchaeus, now hear it this way. Zacchaeus, the sinner. Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Zacchaeus, the hated one. And what does Jesus teach us? Forgiveness and love. And he says to Zacchaeus, I'm staying with you. I'll, I'm going to have dinner with you tonight. Everybody grumbles. Well, that's part of our very strong tradition, as I mentioned, it's one of the sacraments, penance. And the ability to forgive, I have to say, is not natural to us as human beings. The ability to get back and get even and get revenge is pretty natural. Regrettably, I don't know how that works. So what Jesus is doing for us today is really opening our eyes to the tradition that he established and then eventually the church established as a sacrament, the tradition of forgiveness and the openness of love to the outsider. That's tough. You know that's tough. In our society, in our world, opening our tables and our homes to the outsiders, the strangers. That's why we have such a flourishing of, of soup kitchens here in, in Manhattan. Because we have a lot of, quote, outsiders, even those who are residents who don't have enough. So they show up at the soup kitchen. And what in charity we do, we feed them, which is our obligation, whether it's Catholic Charities or the, or the state. Now come to Mary. When we celebrate, when we look at the presentation of Mary, it's a tradition. It's written nowhere in the scriptures. It is written in what we call um, um, scriptures that are not official part of the church, um, the non-canonical non scriptures, which are books like 
the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Gospel of Thomas. They're not in our Bible because they're not official canonical books. Canonical meaning official. But there are stories that started way back when that still go on and were eventually collected and written down. But the church said, no, they don't meet the criteria for being biblical. So we'll take them as extra biblical literature. And that's where the presentation of Mary comes in. Now, Joseph and Anna, excuse me, Anna and Joachim, her parents, were continuing a very interesting tradition, and t- tradition is the theme going through everything today, that they would present their firstborn child to the temple. However, it was a firstborn boy. For them to dedicate their daughter as their firstborn in her age of probably nine years old was a dedication that she belonged to God. Now, you know, you come from my kind of family, Italian family, every, bo- every new baby is a gift of God and every new baby is treated like God. It's not right, but we do. We, we, we fall over ourselves taking care of babies. So Mary comes along and the tradition is, if you're going to bring her to the temple to dedicate her, she belongs to God. And Joachim and Anna decided it was worth it because they waited a long time to have her. And when she was born, she belonged to God. Tradition. So we as Roman Catholics have a wonderful reams, libraries of traditions. But the traditions you have in your own home are important. Keep them. Pass them on to your ancestors. Pass them on to your children and your families. Bring other people into those traditions, whatever they are, regarding our faith. That all of us together can keep growing in technicolor, in every different direction. And before we celebrate Thanksgiving, I'd like to wish all of you a peaceful, healthy Thanksgiving. If you eat it alone, with the family, with friends, enjoy it. If it's bread or if it's turkey, and give thanks to God together.